Hey guys, welcome back. It is your favorite Gimp with a Limp and I have a few minutes here. So I thought I would do a little more painting and just, you know, gab with you guys for a little bit. Uh, you guys are free to watch it, free not to watch it. I'm going to do my usual thing, paint a little bit, talk some shit, do my, uh, do my thing. I uh, actually finished up the guys that I was painting before. Now I'm trying a different camera angle than I had last time. Last time I was kind of shooting in from up on an angle and kind of zooming in a little bit. Now I'm trying it directly from above and trying to zoom in a little more, trying to kind of find the best spot so you guys can see. Like I said, I haven't filmed for, uh, for painting before, so this is a learning experience for me. So if you guys have any suggestions or if you like this angle better, you like the other angle better, uh, put it down in the comments. Let me know, and I'll keep kind of moving things around and experimenting until I find the, the best way to go with it. Uh, I'll have to change my setup a little bit until I figure this out. I'm still getting the lighting just right and all that because it, it's a whole lot harder when you're doing painting. All right, but these are the minis that we were painting up the other day. As you guys can see, I have finished them up. I think they came out pretty good. I got the bone painted in and all the other metal little colors and then I hit them with the wash to make those bones stand out in the little dark spots. I didn't use the black wash. I wanted them to kind of have a, a browner, dingier look to them. So I went with the strong tone of the, the wash from Army Painter instead of they have the dark tone. This is like black, right? So this is like your your really dark wash. Now the thing is like with uh, Citadel paint, right? They have, shit, I forget what those things are called. Uh, Agrax Earth Shade, I think is one of them and, and something else. But basically it's black and brown are the two shades you need. When it comes to Army Painter, I have found that it's dark tone and strong tone, but they have like mid tones. So there's a couple more you can use. There's soft tone, which is like strong, but just a little bit muted. So this is like a light brown versus that being a dark brown. And then there's flesh wash, which is like an even lighter brown, but as, and of course my phone dings, my apologies. It has an even more kind of a, like a reddish tint to it, like a pinkish tint. It, it gives it just a little bit uh, more fleshy color to it. Uh, don't think this works as well for like black skin. So if you're doing a black person, I would probably go with the dark tone to, to match the, the skin pigments a little bit better. It depends. It's all about like what skin pigment you're going with on which wash that you'll use. But there are a, a selection of washes you can use for whatever effect. Plus they have other washes like green and purple and red, mild brown. They have a, a selection blue, and I find these to work very, very well, just depending on uh, which one that you're, or what effect you're going for. I like this one, Military Shader, which is another type of a, a green. Shake it up a little bit. It's hard to see uh, not actually putting it on something, but Military Shader works better on stuff like a, a, a piece of equipment, so like a tank or a gun that you want to have like a green camo look to it. And then this green one, wherever I put it, this green one, this green tone is actually what I used on these hands. You guys can see how they got into the creases there a little bit and you just, just brush it over a little bit and let that sit in there. And you can see with the light necrotic flesh and then wash it with a green, it ends up coming out looking pretty good. I'm gonna hit this with a, <clears throat> a dry brush later, some type of maybe a blue, I think, on the metal to try to, to bring that out a little bit, but I'm going to touch on those a little bit. So let's see what we can paint here. Now I've got four of these guys done. It takes me forever because I am so anal retentive when it comes to painting them. So we're going to keep touching up on these guys, I think. We'll hit the uh, some of the metal parts that need to be hit. Yeah, we'll do the light metal. Now, I have a selection of metals that I use. Gunmetal is the darker one, right? So you're going to use that when you have, obviously, a gun. This one's my favorite, but I burned through it a lot, so I ended up buying a, an extra bottle of that because I kind of figured I'd burn it out pretty quick. 
Uh, shining silver is obviously when you want something to stand out. And the plate mail is kind of the in-between the two of these. So if you want something shot in the middle, you are you want it to be a little dark, but not too dark, not like gunmetal dark, you know, go with the plate mail. So I've been using plate mail on these guys. And I'm going to do that. But you can see it's not really, let me hold it up, not really silver. It depends on how much of that wash got on it. I don't know how well that's showing through. I'll try to zoom in in my post-production. It just depends if the wash pulled up on it a little bit. But it gives it uh, a metal look, but like a dirty metal look, which these guys are dead. You know, they're supposed to look dirty. So, and one of the problems with your wet palette, though, as you guys can see, is your paint, after it sits there a little bit, it separates. So it keeps it wet longer and allows you to use it longer. But that stuff will separate the hell out on you, and you can't use it more than like a day later. All right, so let's shake it up a little bit, and we'll put a little bit of metal on these guys before I uh, get ready to go to bed. Hope everyone's been doing well, handling things all right. I know the world's been a little crazy here recently, unfortunately. Evidently, we uh, had a new country form. Did you hear about that? Have you seen this? <laughs> we'll have a little, uh, what is it, uh, Jay Leno going on in the show tonight. But yeah, they uh, they took over a section of Seattle. That That is some crazy stuff. I'm wondering how that's going to end up playing out. And for anyone who knows me, they know how I think it should play out. But I am not going to get political not on my painting videos. This is my relaxed time. This is my time to to not have to let the world weigh me down. But speaking of which, because of everything that's going on, if any of you guys are like hunters or recreational shooters, it is hard to get ammo. I was actually at, I'm trying to hold this in such a way that you guys can see where I'm at, but this is such a little tiny piece in here. Just painting the backside of these little wings on the shoes. But yeah, we went over to Cabela's today and we were trying to get a little 40 caliber ammo. And I needed uh, some extra 40 cal for my uh, personal defense rounds. I had used them up, unfortunately. Because your ammo goes bad over time, right? I mean, it won't like go bad, not like a, um, food or anything like that. You can keep it on hand for a while, but ammo is like anything else. So it just kind of wear out. So you want to replace it. You know, use up your old stock, put some new stock in there. And I had not replaced my personal defense rounds, which I keep on me. And for those of you who don't know, like, you want to shoot cheap stuff, right? You don't want to shoot uh, your expensive stuff, your your hollow points or your, your hydro shocks uh, when you're just target shooting at the range. So you'll get a, a few boxes of cheap rounds to use. And unfortunately, that was all I had left is my cheap rounds because I had burned out my uh, self-defense rounds not too long back to uh, just burn them out and I was going to replace them. And unfortunately, the damn uh, stores are just like out of everything. I went into Cabela's. I was like, well, I don't want to pay a whole lot in shipping. So let's just see if they have what I need on hand. You know, stores are opening back up. The kids love seeing the uh, the fish ponds that they have there. Yeah, if you haven't been to Cabela's, Cabela's is great. They've got a lot of cool stuff in there. If you're into hunting, fishing, archery, you know, any cool little hobbies. And they have this big fish tank with a bunch of fish in it. So the kids love watching the fish. And I went over to the ammo section. And I was poking around over there. And they had nothing like absolutely nothing they uh was it like three sh uh, three aisles of shells of ammo it was kind of like pistols and then rifles and then further down was um i've got this zoomed in so you guys can't see my ammo but, uh further down was like your shotgun round stuff like that right all those shells the uh the pistol shelf was almost completely bare they just had a few things left on it. I was so disappointed. So I am going to have to contact 
or make an order online rather. Uh, unfortunately, all my contacts are gaming related and not gun related. Maybe I should do a shooting video. See if I can get sponsored by like ammo.com or something like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, uh, I'll, uh, I'll cover you guys. I'm sure you'll, your customers will love it. I've got, you know, almost 4,000 subscribers. I got a big name. <laughs> oh, man. I'll tell you what, in the, in the war gaming industry, you know, I'm doing pretty decent. You know, I do not complain. You know, I do this stuff for you guys anyway. I mean, hell, it's not like we get paid for it. Like, really, we don't at all. None of the war game reviewers get paid. The, uh, the ad money that they used to have, that got taken out. If you've heard of the YouTube Adpocalypse thing, there were actually two. There was the first Adpocalypse, which, and at this time, I can't even tell you what it was over. It was over something political. And on these, by the way, try to avoid, I try to keep them in the lines because while I am going to paint over them later, it's hard because it's going to be a bone color on most of these spots that I'm painting over. And bone is not going to cover up that metal that well. So try to keep it in the line as much as possible. Uh, but anyway, they had the first Adpocalypse. And that <clears throat> that hurt people pretty bad. Right, The first one, they, they cut a lot of funding that they used to uh, have going to people. I heard some people lost you know, upwards of half of the money that they were getting. So a lot of people were making a living off of YouTube, which was great, you know? Uh, a new form of career had basically been developed. But they didn't like what some people were saying. And it's like, look, I, I get it, but you guys are a platform. It doesn't matter if you like it. You just have to let it exist so you guys make more money. Now, I get they can't let, like, terroristic stuff on. Okay, no problem. But they weren't just doing that. They started gunning after people they disagreed with politically. And that was, you know, the first apocalypse, ad apocalypse. That, I think, God, I can't even remember. Maybe someone will put down in the comments. It either happened before I got started or maybe right after I got started and I was too small to care and I wasn't monetized at the time. I can't remember which. I remember that I wasn't wholly concerned at the time. But after that, you know, ad revenue cut down a lot for a lot of different people. And then a lot more recently, they had another ad apocalypse. And this one I know a little bit more about. And it was over a gentleman named Steven Crowder. And I'm not going to, again, get into likes, dislikes. I'm just ranting. Okay. Just BSing while we're painting. So it was over him. And evidently he had said some stuff about a, another gentleman who was on a show called Vox. Okay. Like VOX. And those two guys do not like each other too much. So Steven had insulted... Oh, shit. I can't remember the guy's name. Carlos. Carlos. Uh, I watched a few videos because I wanted to figure out what was going on with all this and why like YouTube was going crazy. And they basically Carlos tried to have Steven's channel removed and he did everything he could. Uh, and the thing was, is like Steven's channel was already demonetized. So it didn't matter. He only makes his money off of uh, support from his, uh, not patrons, but basically he has a, a separate funding program where people who watch his show can like buy his merchandise. So that's how he makes his money. Okay. That's great for him, but their little war because of all the insults they were sending back and forth to each other, it made it to where YouTube got partly scared and partly political again. And they started defunding everything again. And it got to where some people at that point were making 10% of what they used to make. And I'll tell you guys, because I mean, like I said, I don't care. I, with the, the few thousand subscribers that I get and the average reviews I get, at most, at most, I probably make 50 bucks a month from ad revenue, right? At most. So... Let's let's just say for easy numbers that it's 50. 
the the thing of it is is if I had the views, the same view, same everything. Now, before all that stuff happened, I'm willing to bet mine would be a fair bit higher on like my my take home from them. Not not wholly, you know, big numbers like um, this will replace your job and you can, you know, do YouTube full time type deal type of money. But I would bet it would be at least three to four times what I get from them and the whole ad revenue uh, now. So I got to say that that little spat pissed off a lot of people because people like myself who aren't involved with it, don't do anything with that crap. We're, we're doing legitimate independent content. We don't want to be involved with it. Now I'll talk about some things that have to do with like gaming, right? If it's kind of politically based, but I, I still prefer to avoid it as much as possible because this is this is my hobby. I don't want to get my hobby crossed with stuff that is unpleasant. And politics has definitely gotten very unpleasant uh, here recently. So you just you can't make what you used to make doing YouTube anymore. Thanks to all the warring factions going after each other, trying to uh, demonetize each other. Well, it's not each other. It's it's mainly like one side trying to demonetize the other side. But because of that, it's caught so many others in the middle. And then we had the whole COPPA thing. That's why I have that paragraph in all the, uh, the descriptions of my videos now about uh, these videos are not made for children because they're not made for children. They're made for other a-holes like myself and that had to do with like government regulation that too man i'll tell you youtube was real shady about how they handled that because they basically were like all right well this is a government regulation and it has to do with our company and we're going to put the onus on our creators so you guys can be sued by the government for tens of thousands of dollars for regulations that we're going to leave very vague and ambiguous so you have no clear-cut definitions of what you can or can't do but we're going to make sure it's a you problem and not an us problem when it really is a them problem they need to to handle that that's not on the uh, the creators i'm sorry i'm trying to let you guys see as much of what i'm working on here but this is at the bottom of the thing so you might not be able to see it as well but yeah they uh they were chickening out and trying to to put the onus on us when it's not on us it's on them for the whole government regulation and it makes it harder for people to make a living over the whole kid thing like look i get it there are some channels like my channel for example right i do gaming kids like gaming i'm sure there's plenty of kids that like war games and tabletop stuff and miniatures so i'm sure that there's a, a younger base that's going to watch my some of my content not a not a huge portion but there's going to be a, a smaller uh, portion of younger viewers who are into this type of stuff but i don't make my content specifically for kids and because of that i'm not wholly on my P's and Q's, right? So I'll cuss here and there. It's a light. I try to keep it PG-13 rated. So a little shit here, a little ass there, but I, I try not to drop F-bombs on the channel. And that's another thing that confuses me about YouTube though, man. They, uh, they have some channels. They can say whatever they want. They can cuss as much as they want. Uh, say whatever, I mean, like whatever foul language comes to their mind I, i've watched them say it and there's no repercussions but other channels they will be demonetized and rode hard and put up wet for the slightest that's the thing there, there's no general guideline that you can follow and since they're like that you have to kind of watch every little thing that you say because they'll suddenly gun for you honestly i've talked to some others who do youtube and our thought process is they're trying to become another 
uh, cable station. They're basically trying to become uh, a TV station in a in and of themselves so that they can, I don't know, become Fox or CNN or whatever the hell they're shooting for. And the thing of it is, is people flocked to YouTube because they wanted the different, right? You guys, you, you guys come here to watch me, right? And I'm not talking about me specifically in, in general. I just like mean the independent creator. You guys come for that. You don't come because you want to watch the mainstream news or uh, mainstream uh, sitcoms or any of that crap. You want to see what that independent creator could come up with. Like this, oh man, I'm telling you, there are some really good like independent uh, videos. There's some stuff that's been made in the 40K uh, genre. Oh God, I can't remember the name of that video, but you guys have got to look it up, right? If you're into 40K, there's this video. Just type in live action 40K uh, video and you will find it. I guarantee you will find it. And it's about this, I almost said National Guardsman, but it's about this uh, guardsman. And you see the guy, he's like wounded. He's been hurt. He's down on the ground. He picks up his last gun. He's shooting it. I think it's Tyranids, Chaos Tyranids, uh, some evil Xenos. He's shooting at him. His gun runs dry. He pulls out his uh, his uh, combat knife. And he starts saying the the prayer to the emperor and like, you know, the emperor protects and all the other good stuff. And as he's saying it, you hear the loud thump, thump, thump of a space marine walking in. And he, the space marine ends the prayer for him and goes to town on the Tyranids. Starts shooting him with his bolt gun and, or shooting the bad guys with his bolt gun, uh, pounding him with his power fist and, the, the guardsman's like, wow, you know, the emperor protects and he stands up and it gives you like chills. Like if you're into 40K, it'll give you chills. It's, it's freaking awesome as hell. My whole point with that though, is that that type of content, that individualistic stuff that, I mean, it's only what, five minutes at most. I mean, it's not a long video, but it's made by independent people and you wouldn't get that from a big company. They're not going to churn out anything except stuff that's going to make them the most profit. They're they're not concerned with the fan base, right? The the people who want a little bit of like their their love, their passion on the screen. All right, so let me hold this out kind of center for you guys can see. Hit just the little tip of his horn there. The rest of the helmet's going to be blue. And I got his arm guards, his waist guards and then the little wing crap things on his uh, boots and then right there around his waist. I can touch up any little spots that I missed. Unfortunately, I hate to say it, but my eyesight's been a little bit uh, wonky. I'm, I'm afraid I need to go to the doctor and get shit checked out, but I keep trying to put it off because I don't want to admit that I'm getting old and shit's breaking down. Like I'm still in my 30s. My stuff's supposed to work for a long time, you know? I am not to the blue pill stage yet. Don't, don't do that to me, Lord. But I will be getting old. It's pretty soon going to be a four instead of a three in front of my age. That's all right. Because I got a pretty wife and it makes everything else go smoother. I'll tell you what. I, I forget what movie it was. Uh, I think it was, shit, um, that old actor that I like. Robert Duvall. I mean, love Robert Duvall. Uh, I can't. I think it was him. I can't remember what movie it was. Was saying, you know, I said he married an ugly woman. He's like, don't ever do that. It'll take the life right out of you. Something like that. Can't remember uh, what show or movie I saw that from. It might not have been him. It might have been another old guy. But uh, I'll tell you, having a, a pretty missus. Mrs. Gimpy there, she uh, she makes life worth living. She does good taking care of the kids, taking care of me, waking up, seeing her every day. And it just puts a little smile on your face, you know, when you got a pretty little missus right there next to you. Which, actually, I heard something interesting. And I know I'm just kind of rambling, but like I said, I kind of ramble when I paint. feel like I'm talking to someone. And I figured I could record it. That way I'm not, uh, <laughs> not talking to myself. But, uh... Shit, I lost my train of thought by telling you guys that. I know there's something about the 
the missus. Oh, I lost my train of thought. I know someone put in the comments like, this is what you were thinking, but no, it's gone now. See, that's part of that brain injury thing. The, the smallest pause, like just walking from one room to another, can cost me whatever I was thinking. I can't tell you guys how many times I've gotten up to go get something, got into the room, and I know I went into the room to get something, but I forgot why I went like what the, the object was that I was after. So I go back to my original room. And when I get into the original room, I remember because I realized what it is that I'm needing, go back to the room, the other room again, trying to get that item. And again, forget why I went. That is the biggest pain in the butt. If you guys haven't seen it, actually I'll put it on camera here. That's the, uh, the Humvee I was in. I actually had it tattooed on. The, uh, the words underneath it are, though I drove through the valley of the shadow of death, I still feel, I can never say it, still fear no evil. And I don't. I might get killed by evil one day, but it won't be today. But that memory shit drives me nuts. It was the, uh, the landmine blew up underneath us, and it blew up right underneath where I was sitting. We were lucky and that we were in an actual up, damn phone, up armored Humvee that had the uh, the cab of the Humvee surrounded by composite steel. And it was something like three or four inches of, of steel surrounded the cab instead of uh, the older Humvees that we had as well that just had plate steel welded onto them, right? So those couldn't take the blast. If we'd been in one of those, you guys would not have ever heard of a Gimpy video because Gimpy would not be here. Gimpy would be in pieces spread the hell all over Iraq. But thankfully we were in the right Humvee. Oh, I can't get underneath there. I hate that when you got a spot you can't get underneath to. I just want to get a little pain on you, you little bastard. Let's see if I can just put it under like that. But uh, yeah, since it exploded underneath us, I was actually in the process of taking off my helmet and I hadn't finished, but we didn't have the, uh, the upgraded helmets. The upgraded helmets were ones that have padding. So strangely enough, we had netting, but no padding. And we even joked about it. Like these, these helmets are going to hurt when we get hit. And it did. It might stop some damage from getting through, but you're still getting hit very hard in the head with the Kevlar because, you know, as you're hit from the bottom and smashed into the top of a steel armored Humvee, the Kevlar is not, you know, padding your head at all. So it was like smash. I woke up later in the hospital and ever since then, shit has definitely been blurry. I, I don't remember the explosion. Actually, the explosion went off. I remember everything went black. And I started coming around uh, in the hospital itself. Like there's images, like snapshots that I have. Kind of like I was blinking. And all I can see and remember is what I kind of blinked during that time period when the, right after the, the bomb went off. But it was kind of our mistake. We, we went to the same spot more than once and we shouldn't have. They picked up on it, on where we were going what we were doing and they made us pay for it the hard way but we got them back we actually we completed the mission we were running uh patrols that day and my twin brother was out on patrol with me and i know everybody thinks that's the craziest thing that i was out running patrols with my twin brother right there next to me but he was he wasn't in the same humvee he's actually the reason i was in the humvee i was in because we got in the same Humvee together and our sergeant was like, no, no, you guys can't be in the same Humvee. If we get hurt and one of us gets uh, taken out, if that Humvee gets destroyed, your parents will kill me. You know, if you guys die together. So I got to spread you out. That way we spread the pain out. So <laughs> I was like, thanks, Matt. Appreciate that. But I got to give that little SOB credit, right? So I'm in the hospital, I come to, and 
they it was called Fallujah Surgical. That was our, our hospital on base. I come around and they had cut all my stuff off me, right? Because when I got brought in the hospital, I got brought in, covered in everything. So I had blood and mortar oil and dirt and sand and grit covering every uh, all of my body. But I was still wearing a combat load, which meant I had a lot of ammunition and grenades strapped to my chest. Hospitals and grenades don't mix. So they got that shit the hell off me. And uh, in the process, I had a pouch on my LBV. It's called my load bearing vest. It's the type of vest, the same stuff you see on uh, body armor now as well. Those little straps, those little straps, like kind of like a checkerboard looking pattern serve a purpose on armor. You uh, weave uh, little straps through them and it holds little pouches on your your armor and your gear so you can tuck stuff in them like ammo and grenades. And I'll tell you, you could tell who was a fobbit and a fobbit or a fob dweller as we called them was someone who never left the wire, okay? So someone who stayed on base and we always joke that they did two patrols uh, two patrols outside the wire. The first patrol in when they landed in country and then the last patrol out as they were leaving country. We, we didn't uh, like those guys too much. We made fun of them. But um, you could tell who a fob dweller was because they would have their gear pouches strapped in such a way that they were like on their back or kind of spread around the body armor making the load more even you know, weird stuff like that. But if you got in a, a Hummer, a hum, not Hummer, Humvee, and you were running outside the wire, you couldn't have things in certain positions. It would kill you trying to sit like that. So you could tell by looking at a guy's armor whether or not he ever actually went outside the wire. If he had his armor set up like a joker and shit everywhere instead of uh, neat and easy to reach places that you can access if you need to and quick, fast, in a hurry and you couldn't sit with your body armor on, you knew the guy never left the wire. But anyway, what happened is they cut that vest off of me, trying not to lose my train of thought again. They cut that vest off of me, just to make sure I'm in camera. I think this is a little better than last time. And it had my cigarettes in it. So it had my lighter and my smokes and they moved all that stuff away because, you know, I'm unconscious and all they're seeing is grenades and ammo. They don't understand the importance of not taking my cigarettes from me. So I put out a message to our motor lot where I knew my brother was going to be coming back soon. Because he went back out to finish the mission. And I put out a, a message to him that he needed to get to Fallujah, uh, Fallujah Surgical. Uh, quick, fast. It's an emergency. He needs to get there right now. And all he knows is his brother's in the hospital. He went and ran the mission. He did not know if I was still alive. He didn't know how badly I had been injured. If I was being taken home. If I was being sent home in a body bag. He didn't know shit. So all he knows is he gets back to base after finishing the mission. And he's told... You need to get down to Fallujah Surgical now. Uh, they've sent a message saying that it's emergency. You got to get there real quick. So he doesn't even take off anything. He just takes off running full pelt for the hospital. And he's still strapped up for the mission. So he's got a combat load on, which isn't horribly heavy, but pretty heavy. Maybe about 60 pounds or so, uh, depending on what all you got on you. And he just flat runs it as fast as he can. Full tilt sprint for Fallujah Surgical. And, oh, I dropped my papers. Hold on. And it's about a mile away. And he gets there in just a couple minutes. I mean, he, he was worried. And I see him bust into the room where I'm in a hospital bed at this point. And he's like, oh, my God, are you okay? Are you dead? What's going on? They told me it was an emergency. And. I remember I sat up in the bed and 
And I was like, those damn assholes took my cigarettes. They cut them off of me. You can carry my ass out so I can smoke because I'm pissed. And I, I started yelling and cussing at him about it. He was like, you son of a bitch. I can't believe you told me, you told them it was an emergency and had me run down here. I thought you were dead. I was like, well, aren't you glad I'm not dead? He's like, well, yeah. He, he came over and he literally scooped my ass up, carried me outside to a bench and gave me a smoke. I was like, all right, now I'm good. Now I can let the painkillers wash over and I'll just sit back and relax for a little while. And after that, I spent a lot of time on light duty until my ass healed up. Anyway, that was enough rambling. All right, I know I got a few little pieces. I got to touch up on these. Unfortunately, when you're doing silver and it's white, unless your eyesight is real perfect, you can miss little spots here and there. And I know I'm going to see a few more as I paint these guys up. But that's all right, because the silver metallic paint works really well for covering up. So even if I make a little mistake here or there, I can touch those guys up. So this is where we are at. You guys can't even really tell a difference on them. I'll just hold up one of them. But we got the arm guards, waist guards, around the waist. I do believe I got around the waist on both of them, right? Yeah, it looks like I got them. So, and that, and then the little tip of the horn, right? I'm going to do blue everywhere else on those guys. So it'll look similar to these guys on how theirs is. Basically, these are the same types. They're just in different poses. And I think these guys are linemen. Are they linemen? I was thinking about that the other day. Are they linemen? Shambling undead. Shambling undead. And it doesn't say whether they're linemen. I wonder if it says in the instructions. I don't know. We'll have to look on it. Let's check real quick. Okay, so here is the little chart. Skeletons are regeneration and thick skull. Ooh, the only guys that have block are the rights, which are these little bent over a holes. That's not too good. The regeneration is good because you can bring them back, but none of them are overly strong and none of them are really overly agile. There's a few that are average. Skeleton being two, that's not too good. Armor value seven, that's, that's kind of low. Zombies are actually better. They move slower, but they have a better armor value. So I'm going to say the zombies are the, the linemen here because the linemen don't need to be as fast. The rights look like they would be... Okay, well, which ones are the rights? No, I think I'm doing that wrong. The ghouls are the, the kneeling over guys because they have dodge. They don't have catch, but they have dodge. They're going to be like the ball carriers, ball throwers, those type of guys. They have the lowest armor, too. These guys have block, the right. So this has to be that, the blitzer. These guys are the blitzers. That's what it is. All right, so the skeletons are kind of like generic troops. And your zombies are your your linemen type guys. You're, you're more cannon fodder. And the mummies are the ones you want to put kind of on your center line. I'm thinking with these guys, since I got two of them, that I kind of space them out across the line. You guys let me know if you want to see more Blood Bowl. I love Blood Bowl. I'm going to have to see if I can talk the wife into to playing a little Blood Bowl with me because I freaking love that game. I love the teams. And now that I've got an undead team, I can't wait to get them on the field because we have, of course, the humans and the orcs and the undead. We've got an elven team, a dwarf team, and something else a goblin team all right so we've got those six teams and i want to collect more teams over time you know as i get a chance here and there and a little bit extra funds uh collect extra teams and paint those guys up but the blood bowl is one of the best absolute best uh box games that i think gw puts out the rest of the stuff is all about getting you into something else 
right? One of their other games, like Kill Team wants to get you into 40K, Warcry wants to get you into Fantasy, but Blood Bowl just wants you to get into Blood Bowl, right? <laughs> you can't take these guys and, and use them in something else. I mean, they're used for Blood Bowl. They're, they're dressed like football players. But freaking excellent game. I mean, they really just did good, especially with the custom dice and everything. Oh, I can't tell you guys. I know I, I said this before. I cannot tell you guys how much it it hurts me that my original set of Blood Bowl stuff, and I had a lot of those original teams, It, I without getting into the long history of it, it was basically stolen from me. It, it was lost in a way, but... It was in effect stolen from me. It just it's real mess on the history of how I, I lost that set, but I had a lot of real good teams. Uh, some of the a lot of the same teams. Oh, and I had a vampire team. Oh, and I miss those guys. God, I love that. Oh, if I could have them now. Anyway, I'll stop rambling here. Uh, you guys, like I said, let me know down in the comments if you like the the painting stuff where I'm just rambling. Do you want me to talk more about painting? Do you want me to tell more stories? Do you want me to just shut up and paint? Like, this is just kind of extra content I'm filming because I'm already doing something anyway with the painting these guys. So I'm just setting up the camera and running my mouth. So you guys let me know what it is you want to see, and I'll adjust as I go to try to make this uh, better for you guys. Uh, again, let me know if this angle worked better or if the other angle worked better, which way you prefer. If you want it closer in, farther out, whatever. Y'all let me know. Doing this for you guys. All right, but that's going to be it for me. You guys take care. I'll see you in the next one.